in five, four, three, two, one, and you're live with Channel 19 News. Comic Book Girl 19 here with the Netflix news. These are all the things I've been watching on Netflix lately. All right, so one of the things I like to watch on Netflix are documentaries. Uh, there's a ton of documentaries on Netflix. Some of them not so great. You know, I've checked out Chaos on the Bridge. Eh, it was okay, whatever. But what really grabbed my attention was Electric Boogaloo, the wild untold story of Canon Films. A lot of you on Twitter were telling me to watch this one. I listened, I took your advice, and it was amazing. You were right. Thanks, guys. Good job, Twitter. What's it about? So this is about a, not necessarily a failed production, but about a failed production company. Uh, if you've been paying attention recently, we love talking about doomed production films. We love getting into what happened and how it all collapsed. This is that, except on a much larger scale with an entire production company who is constantly putting out failed movies <laughs> that are doomed productions. Like, almost every single one of these productions is a doomed fucking production, okay? And it is completely fascinating watching the rise and fall of this insane group so Canon Films uh, is known for making a lot of bad movies from the 80s, all right? That's like one of their big deals. They're an independent movie production company. Not necessarily bad. Mostly bad. Uh, they're, they're, they had a couple of financial hits, but I mean, in the grand scheme of things, like did any of their movies ever win any Academy Awards? No, they didn't because they're not good movies. What movies did Canon make? Okay, so here's some of the things I like that they made. They did some stuff with Jean-Claude Van Damme, such as like Bloodsport, Kickboxer, Cyborg. Like those ones I think are one of their like better ones. They also made a bunch of movies with Charlie Bronson. They made a lot of Death Wish movies uh, after the first one. They also made a lot of Chuck Norris films. Uh, they had like ninja movies. They had a Hercules movie with Lou Ferrigno where he throws a bear into space. Ah! Uh, you have a movie that I just had to buy on Blu-ray, Life Force. Uh, this is on the Blu-ray report, you can check that out, uh, my review on that movie. Uh, there's just tons of movies, like Masters of the Universe. Oh my god, that movie's terrible. They did that one. That was uh, the song at the end. Yeah, that was one of the last ones that they made. Uh, that and like, uh, they did Superman 4, Quest for Peace, you know? And that one was really interesting because they were talking about how this is supposed to be this big budget movie that's gonna save the studio and that they're running out of money in the middle of production and this is like a visual effects movie so like when you're when you run out of money and you can't do the visual effects like what the fuck is this movie gonna be and it's terrible and this movie shows that whole situation the two guys behind this company golan and globus there's these two israeli fellows and like they just like want to get in on Hollywood, okay? Like, cause they were doing the Hollywood thing. Like they were doing like the Israeli Tel Aviv Hollywood. They made their own movies out there that did well. So then they were like, well, we want to take it to America and make like American films and all this sort of stuff. Cause they like love movies. The good thing about Menachem is he could hear an idea from somebody like his daughter seeing a break dancer on Venice Beach. And in a relatively short amount of time, there is a movie being made about it. This, this is a new dance. This will grab the whole world. But they also really don't have great taste, like at all, but they have an amazing business plan. Uh, and that business plan keeps them afloat for like, I don't know, I guess almost a decade or something like that. I just said, okay, we're making this movie. We're going into production in three weeks. We didn't have a script. We didn't have cast. We didn't have anything. Break in and you just don't stop. But there's only so many shitty movies you can make before your entire production company collapses. And watching uh, all these different people being interviewed about the process, about all these different films that they made, I mean, it's, extremely fascinating and it is a very well-made documentary what about american virgin oh yeah all right let's cut this shit and now let's all get serious they talk about american virgin i remember seeing that movie it was like on tv and i was like what the fuck is going on in this film and then yeah it's it's just no taste man and apparently last american virgin was based off an Israeli movie that they did in Tel Aviv called Lemon Popsicle that did well over there and they just redid the whole movie. These movies were made by foreign dudes who were trying to act like they were in the Hollywood system but they weren't in the Hollywood system and so these movies all have this weird foreign flavor to them despite having like higher production values, sometimes, <laughs> not all of the time, uh, and despite having big names and things like that. Uh, it was, it's just, it's a fascinating story and as someone who wants to kind of be 
an independent movie production company at some point, uh, I learned a lot. What happened to Canon Films in the end? How did they go to business? Uh, the company is not able to continue to operate profitably. The movies are not doing well at the box office. They have a large amount of what is called a selling and administrative expense, and now a very heavy interest payment annually from all of the bonds and the debt that they have taken on to fund themselves. So the beginning of the end for Canon Films seems to be when they somehow found a guy who was able to raise $300 million in investment money for them. So then they just like went nuts and were just like turned into this run and gun company. I mean, they were already a run and gun company, but they just started like pumping out as many movies as they could. Like they did, there were movies being filmed that those guys didn't even know about. And then like they would screen them and they would think it's an entirely different film and then be really confused and like give all these notes for like another film that they thought they were watching because they couldn't even keep up with the amount of films they were coming out with. They were coming out with like 40, movies or something like that when like normal studios come out with like maybe 10 i mean it's insane and they were like they were going so fast and making all these movies but then none of them would make their money back so then like they would just keep trying to like pre-sale movies and then make them and then they would never it just you can't you can't do that forever it's just not gonna work eventually they blew it all just like most hollywood stories <laughs> that's just movies man it's like gambling and sometimes you're gonna lose and especially if you don't have any taste at all. <laughs> the mid 1980s, Canon Films obtained the rights to Spider Man and planned to make a live action film version. Flashy poster art was created and trade ads were placed in Variety magazine. So that's it for Netflix News. Have a good night, America and the internet. <laughs>